Right, welcome everybody to a little impromptu lunchtime live. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about approach play. So hopefully we can help you with your approach play and maybe get you lowering some scores and enjoying your golf a little bit more. Now we have a competition in today's video. Let me just take this out so I don't get a doubling of the audio um, where you could win this Sevy book. Uh, I've got a few to give away across different channels. It's an amazing book, uh, great imagery and stories and stuff about Sevy. Um, you could win this. I'll show you how you could win this at the end in this amazing little presentation pack. So any Sevy fans out there, um, I'll show you what you need to do, all the things you need to do to um, win that book or a chance of winning that book. But the first thing you need to do is tell me how many greens in regulations you are hitting in the comments down below. That's one of the, be the first entries. If you're posting a comment, um, you'll be able to um, enter as long as you've got a few other things which are explained at the other videos, at the end of the video. Um, so let's talk about approach play and how can you improve your approach play. I've got some stats here from ShotScope which I'm going to share with you. Um, which are really interesting when it comes to the ideas of stroke play and hopefully that we'll build on this with a little bit of VT that I've got to run from a tip and then we'll talk about it as we go on. We've got the chat going on in front of us. Love Sevy. Who isn't a Sevy fan? Graham T. Um, people starting Luke Sharp, 11 greens. Brian Alloway, 7 greens. Tom Johnson, 11 greens. Wayne Allen, 30% of greens. 8 to 12, Frank. So we've got the comments going as well but let's just look at this um slide from shot scope to kick us off about greens and regulation and how you could raise your percentage of greens in regulations and i've talked about this a lot before but i just think it's something that needs talking about more so here's the first slide let's look at greens and regulations so people coming up short this is a scratch handicapper between 135 and 175 yards they come up short 16 percent of the time uh, that is a 15 handicapper next they come up short 34 percent of the time where 25 handicappers come sh up short 65% of the time. And what we notice with all the handicaps is that these patterns tend to, like they just step up from lower handicappers up to higher handicappers. So hitting more greens, the biggest way to try and increase that is actually to improve how many you come up short with, which we'll talk about. Let's just watch this little bit of VT, um, this little video here. It's about three to five minutes long. I can't remember how long it is. A little exercise that I want you to practice to improve your approach play. So I've got a pin set out at 136 and I'm hitting groups of shots with a nine iron and my pitching wedge. So two clubs, but we're gonna to go to the same yardage. So just finishing off the data set with the nine iron. Maybe in the comments, you could tell me what club you would hit 136 or what clubs. So when I play the nine iron, I'm kind of feeling a fraction down the grip. I'm not in my normal position. I literally just edge down a fraction, half an inch to an inch. I feel more up the left with my aim and holding off follow throughs. Like I'm going to hit a little feather fade. Like I feel like I've got plenty of club. Apart from if I catch it a bit thin like that one. Kind of there. Oh, yeah, right on it. It's a bit over the top. Right, obviously same target. Now we're gonna finish off with some of the wedge here. So I'm gonna hit my pitcher wedge. Remember my irons are slightly stronger in lofts, but it's irrelevant. It's the two, it, like it, this could have the word zebra written on the bottom. It goes whatever distance I need it to go within the realms of the other zebras and lions and whatever we wanna call them. Now the wedge feels more I'm holding at the top. Maybe a slightly wider stance. I feel like I am going to give it a bit more of a hit. I feel like this is now a full shot to try and get this up to this distance. You can see the short right ones often come up short. It's a better struck iron. And that'll land on that front and just kind of almost release up. It's a nice full one. You see it's going that fraction lower 
and that'll just push up a little bit more right on line. And with the wedge as well, because it's a fuller shot, I could see it as the ball slightly further back, handle forward out to the right. Kind of different shape. I feel like I could almost draw this in there if I wanted to, where with the little nine iron or the nine, I never feel like I could draw it. It's, it's a fade. It's reducing, always trying to reduce where this one's there to pushing. So let's show you how these two clubs could really help me score and combat these ideas of long and short constantly. So first off, if we look, you can see the orange here, a pin to long. The greens here are pin to short. If we look at how far to the pin they average on each batch of shots, 21, point, 21 foot four inches and 19 foot five inches. Standard deviation of nine foot and a half and standard deviation of 13 foot, well, let's call that 14 and call this 10. So you can really see with those two batches of shots that the same distance pretty much from the pin, really, really close. There's nothing in those that would say that one is closer to the other on an indoor flat range idea. But this is the real skill that I'm gonna use out on the course as much as possible and the one I want you to get better at using. When we compare these two, so we see the wedge Ball speed is a fraction lower, it launches a little higher, it spins more, the carry is kind of very close to each other as you can see. So if we're going to a 136 yard pin, this one's averaging three yards total pass and this one's averaging four yards short. It's nothing in it with a standard deviation of five, the standard deviation of three. The biggest difference is these two. So look how the two circles overlap, meaning that plenty of those shots will go exactly the same distance. But let's pretend the green circle up here is the green. The orange circle, if there is danger up the back here, drop offs, water, death in bushes, whatever it is, the little nine iron is a dangerous shot to play. Coming up to the pin and short might be an option. Now, if there is a lake in front, let's say now the orange circle here is the green, well, the green circle of shots, some of them are falling in the lake, but none of the orange are. So if my stats are showing that I come up short a lot in the correct situations where short is not the miss, the little nine iron from that distance is gonna be arguably the better play. Subject to if I want it to stop or use the extra spin, those kind of things. The bigger question here that you need to be asking yourself is when someone asks you, like what club do you hit a certain distance? So it's 150, what club are you got to hit? If you've got one answer, if you go, that's a seven iron, like, and that's just the club that you pull almost without thinking about it, then I think that's where you've got real easy gains to make. So for me, if someone says it's 150, I'm gonna be saying, well, that's a hard nine. It's a medium eight to soft. It's a really soft seven. I've got so many options subject to what I see out in front of me. Having that one yardage is not the play. You need to get this. And I know your shot patterns might be more erratic, but you will still get a crossover like I did on those two circles. You just need to get in front of a launch monitor and find out what those distances are. At least two clubs per yardage is gonna help you move this number and your approaches on to hit more greens. Hitting more greens in the lower scores. there you go um comments coming in let's talk about some of the comments on that idea of having one two or three shots to a yardage which is such a key skill i think so many golfers don't have some of the ideas coming in on the um chat here so if we look at the chat what we've got is people are saying best advice this is chris best advice i got recently was that if you are between clubs, hit the club that gets you into the fat part of the green, five to 10 yards longer, uh, long stroke short of the pin is still the green hit, which is a chance of a putt, which I kind of agree, Chris. And what you could see from my two demos there is basically I was able to work out what club I wanted to hit subject around where the trouble might lie. So it's, it's, it's not just the distance that's making me choose my yardage. So in your short misses, if you think about your percentage of shorts, so if we again look at these percentages of shorts misses, some of them are essential. Some of those shorts are the point of scoring better. It's that you're choosing or able to control the percentage that are short or not. So if you wanna up that percentage of misses that are short, you might need to be thinking about having a bigger club hit softer, those kind of ideas. Um, comments as well in, let's be honest, Mark, your nine iron is an eight iron or seven iron, depending on the loft 
degree and your pitching wedge is a nine or an eight iron turning on the loft degree of the club and hitting into a screen i'm sorry not real for me to go not real for me go out on the course so aldo what happens when you go out on the course is then where obviously i agree it's really good practice and you should be doing this on the course because you'll get slightly different numbers from the grass to the mat as well which you'd have to work in which i've done but collecting dry data allows you to then go out onto the course with some better knowledge and then work in the variations that the course offers you. Reference to the loft of my clubs, definitely they are a bit stronger. I even say that in the video, which you obviously chose to ignore, but that's often what people do when they've got their own, you know, kind of driven agendas in the comment section. Um, you'd have no idea what loft I was delivering on those shots so you have a static loft that doesn't mean i'm delivering that static loft i might be de-lofting it by one degree i might be de-lofting it by seven uh so you know what i mean like someone like matt might use a traditional lofted club and de-loft it four degrees more than i de-loft mine it, it's just one of those it's the, those comments are so strange um six greens index nine people telling me how many greens they hit remember if you want a chance to win this sevy book let me know in those comments how many greens you are hitting in regulation. I'll tell you exactly all the elements, but one of them is you need to post in the comments if you're watching in playback or live now, how many um, greens are you hitting in regulation for a chance to win this book. Other thing to think about with your greens in regulation when it comes to looking at your numbers and counting them, the other question you need to ask yourself is how many greens can you hit in regulation? That's a big question because for lots of golfers, you might only be able to reach 10 of the 18 holes in regulation. There might be some par fours you can't reach, some par threes that you can't reach subject to your ability and your distance. So you're not going to hit 16% of 18 greens, like a high percentage of greens. You might hit... 80% of the 10 greens you can hit. That's 80% 80% greens hit. And that stat's really important for understanding misses short as well. Because if you can't reach them, which is a pattern that you'll see, I think when we go up through these distances, obviously there's a good chance that a lot of the 25 handicappers are hitting it shorter than maybe some of the scratch handicappers. So what's happening is that they are not able to reach every green. So of course their percentage will be short. How many greens are you hitting? out of how many can you hit is another way of thinking about it. And then what we also see with greens in regulation for golfers is we do see a pattern of if you get golfers to hit just one or two more greens in regulation per round, if that is possible, scores definitely do drop. Now, the, the games, the tricks in that video, the fact that I can hit more club less and less club more, if you like, are some of the key skills that you see from better players that aren't there in the higher handicappers. So not only might it be the distance issues that makes that number of short misses go up for the higher handicappers, it's because they're not practicing the skills they need to hit one or two more greens. Because the other thing as well you need to bear in mind when it comes to trying to hit more greens is that you might be better at hitting more club soft or you might be better at hitting less club hard one of those default kind of systems for you try and hit the green and hit the ball closer to the hole actually might work better or worse for you. And what I find is amateur golfers, certainly as you go up through the handicaps, just simply don't practice those systems. So for me, because I've done this test lots and I played this way a lot as a kid growing up, I know for a fact that I hit the ball generally better, more accurate when I take more club and take club off where other players people like matt that are playing our video i would argue he's a little bit better at going at near 100 percent. he's he, he doesn't mind hitting more or less but he as he plays less i think he likes to hit the club that kind of scratches him there and give it somewhere i'm the opposite i like to hit a club that i know that can get there to go past and then i bring some off it or choose to hit it to the back of the green more so definitely working that out from these kind of tests is going to be an option that allows you to hit more green. Shall we go into the comments? What's everyone saying in the comments? Comments. I just started again after 30 years and only have irons currently. So building bags slowly. Trevor, cool. Build that up. I found using the app, the grit allows you to record all that. I'm not quite sure what app that is, but definitely recording your stats will help you. I feel like I'm hitting... Full power shots on the golf course on the range, I'm usually I usually last them. Not doing it on purpose though, David O'Shea. So David, that's a great way where you maybe should be working out if you hit more clubs less, like 
you know, does that make you better or worse? There are things I would want to know. If I knew how to hit my club straight on demand, I would be able to start increasing my real weak greens in regulation. So, Manny, um, straight isn't the bigger issue. Often straight, if you take left and right misses into account, they're smaller amounts of misses than they are short. Um, someone also posted in the comments earlier, obviously improving your strike. Yeah, improving your strike is always going to get you up to the green a little bit more as long as your clubbing is there. But ask yourself in the comments, have you got that skill to play different shots from the same yardage? If you haven't, you need to work it in. And if you work it in and you're worse, you drop it. If you work it in, and for most students I work with, you find that there is a chance for them to squeeze a few more greens out in regulation, and their scores just come down. The other thing with hitting those two kind of shots is I'm getting different flights, slightly different spins, might be getting different stop um, land angles and stop rates through spin and land angle. So then it gives me even more weapons when I need to hit a ball landing near the front of the green. I want it to release up or I want to just chuck it over onto a pin that's relatively tucked. So I'm going to go for it and I'm going to attack on that situation because let's say it's a wedge um, and I'm going to use maybe the slightly steeper land angle of the wedge with the higher spin to try and stop it. That's again the skill of doing what we saw in that video of hitting at least two clubs to one target. Try to get out of the habit of thinking that you've got one shot for each target if you want to hit more greens. Count your greens in regulation as well. Post it in the comments down below um, if you want to win the book. So let's just talk about the book here for you to start. Anyone who wants to win this book, what you need to make sure you're doing is you need to make sure you're following on all these social channels because I've got a few of them to give away and I'm going to give one away to a subscriber of my YouTube channel here who has posted a comment down below telling me how many greens they hit in regulation. They need to be subscribed and they need to have the bell icon on. So you need to make sure that you have that, like the video as always, you need to be subscribed and you need that wherever it is, bell icon on if you want a chance to win this book. Also, I will be giving some away on here. So if you want to increase your, increase your chances, follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook for chances of winning increasing your chances of winning this book so it's not just here today so it comes in a little box it's an amazing illustrations of Seve through his years it's to remember i think 10 years after the passing i think off the top of my head of the great man um it's some great stories in there it's just a really fantastic beautiful book he actually sent me this book to give away and i said to him i don't want to give it away <laughs> I want to keep this one for myself. So they've agreed to give some others away, which they will send to you from um, this video, a lucky subscriber. Now, mine came with this, so hopefully yours will come with this little print as well, which I am going to get framed and up in the office. If you want to win those books, remember, let me know how many greens you hit in regulation in the comments. Subscribe, hit the bell icon, and make sure you like the video. If you like the lies, tell me as well down there in the comments watching this on playback or now. Um, because I will do a lot more of them if you like them. If you want to hit more greens in regulation, you've got to work out first of all how many you can hit to get your real percentage because the percentage will be based on 18. You also then need to work out how many are coming up short for you. For most golfers, you're going to see these patterns reflect through. Obviously, there's always outliers out there, but you are going to see these patterns. If you want to hit one or two more greens per round, uh, in regulation, which will help you lower your scores if you keep doing that over time, which we see when we've done breaking 100, uh, breaking 90, breaking 80, and breaking 70 um, videos, and each one of those for each category of player. So if a scratch handicapper can get their greens in regulation, which is from 125 to 175, 56%, up to 58%, 59, near 60%, they do have more chance of breaking par. And it's no different as you go up through the handicaps. Have more than one shot to each uh, hole, each location. Certainly from like your 80 yards out to your, you know, 175 yards. I get it at 200 yards for some of you. It just is a full shot. It is a full club. But if you've got plenty of, like I've got a hybrid, two hybrids that can hit 200 yards and an iron. So I've got three clubs that can do it. 
Peter. Shotscope is great for keeping track of these stats. Tips for approaching into elevated greens. Liam Ridley. Um, you've just got to... That's a really good question, Liam. Uh, that's another reason why people come up short is because they're not judging slope on elevation. Best way of judging slope on elevation is experience. Best way to build up experience is get a range finder with slope on that you have to turn off when you play, I think, still, if the rules haven't changed. Pretty sure that's true. Um... And what you can do is learn. So guess the slope, measure it, and just keep track of how good you are. The more you do that, so let's say this is a you know this is four yards uphill. You buzz it, and it's twelve yards uphill. You think I'm going to need to keep looking at these slopes to get the eyeball numbers in there. Great question. Um, I do think the short percentage is inflated by any layups on par fives or par fours, depending on ability to hit the green. Well, not on par five layups, it wouldn't be Chris because um, you've got three goes. So unless you're laying up in three and that would cast as a missed green in regulation. I don't know if that's what you mean. Definitely agree, depending on the par four's ability to hit the green, which I've said in this video. You need to work out how many greens you can hit. How many do you hit of the ones you hit? This is something else. I've actually taught the shot scope. I would like them to add because they do do the percentage on 18 holes, which I agree with your point there. I really struggle with 100 yards and in. I hit my favourite club, 54, Jason Wilson. Well, maybe that is the topic for the next life. Thank you. Great question. And one I'd like to deal a bit more in um, depth. So maybe that will be the topic for the next life. If you like the lives, make sure you leave a comment if you want a chance of winning that book as well. How many greens? And remember, give the social posts a follow if you want more chance of winning that book. It's probably one of the best Christmas presents for an avid golfer. Um, if you've got one in your family. Thanks for watching. As always, remember to comment. Let me know if this made sense or not. Let me know if you liked it. And again, I will do more of them. Thank you all for watching.